rehearse my song. Whoa! What the do 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 this invaluable book includes the way you eat it. Step by step instructions on how you eat it. All right, now let's go back into normal zone. Ready? Like to hear it? Here it goes. Uh, you need more? No, I think you shut the fuck up. All right, you shut the fuck up. All right. Uh, you want me to tell you how to find hunting locations on both public and private land no. and how to locate those <laughs> areas? Not Marsh. really. Not really right now. I do. Right now, I want you all to shut up so I can make sure you can hear me. So. No, okay. Okay. Loud. I know I'm loud. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> oh, this is gonna go well. I can oh, tell. This is gonna go fine. This is gonna be awesome. Alright. Alright, so. I was born in a log cabin. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> okay, good. Let's play some music. Alright. Playing some music on Pandora. Shave that porcupine before you eat it. I didn't know he had that. I was wondering who he was talking to. Someone I find much more interesting than you. Fair. That's fair. I get that. Okay, we're going to have to put porn on timeout. All right, I'll get it. Oh, fuck. All right. I got to put the pig back in there. All right, three, two, one, go. MVP sessions number whatever with Hanu Fox, Mr. Paintball himself. 14? Somewhere in there. Somewhere Somewhere in there. I don't know how to area. fucking say it. Hanu is here visiting us in San Diego for the week. Uh, he's on a little workcation. How's that going, fucker? It's good. Yeah. Get to check out paintball fields, and we've done some riding. Been doing it the right way, right? Yep. Zipping around on motorcycles and checking out paintball fields. Not a bad way to do it. In particular, he has an event coming up in December. December 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. We're doing Dead Legends uh, 2, which is going to be a giant paintball park in Lakeside, California, which is right outside San Diego. Yeah, we don't have to go anywhere. It's (laughs) awesome. (laughs) I'm so excited. It's seriously 20 minutes from here, so it worked out really good. It's perfect. And I went and checked it out today. We're going to have a really cool game. I'm going to be able to put a lot of really neat stuff into it. Nice, nice. Well, let's uh, let's get into the history of Mr. Fox. I know. Where did it all start? Where'd you grow up, man? Uh, I grew up in right outside of Chicago, a place called Palatine, Illinois. Um, cool little place, fun. Um, my parents still live in Palatine. I uh, spent most of my time there before I moved off to Wisconsin to go to college, where I met Lonnie. Yeah, the better half. <laughs> Better, way better half. Right on. Yeah. Smarter half. <laughs> and then you guys spent some time living in Florida? Yeah, we went down there. She was going to law school, so I moved down there. Um, loved it. Would never have come back if I had a vote. But, <laughs> you know, it was definitely the better move to raise our kids up in Wisconsin. Much cooler environment for them, but I loved being down in Florida. And it's so cold they can't get away. Yeah, that's basically it. You know, we can still do the... Uh, the street lights come on, you should come home now, kind of thing. And it's it's a good environment. Oh, you'll freeze to death. Right. You will freeze to death and we'll find you in a snowdrift. All right. We got Porno here sitting in on this, so we're going to have him fire off a random question. Go. Go. Random question. Please tell me more about the DJ Hanu and the Hawaii references. Okay. When I lived in Florida, I was surfing, met some really cool guys, and they were very uh, Jeff Spicoli kind of guys when it came to what they were about. And the quintessential surfer. Absolutely. And they were definitely herbal americans and so when we were going surfing they were having a great time and we're we, in between a couple sets they'd always tease me that i surfed like a wine because i didn't turn i just uh. got on the face of the wave and i just raced down the face of the wave and then landed up on a beach and i'd walk back a quarter mile and then paddle back out because i just didn't you know turn right on. so one day we were sitting there in between sets and we were right off vero beach uh which is right by like jupiter beach in that general area okay. a little north of west palm and uh 
a lot of sea turtles lay their eggs there. So while we were sitting in between sets, the nose of your board kind of sits up there. So and uh, Hannah was trying to have sex with a sea turtle. I was having sex with a sea turtle. Yeah. She said I was cute. It was cool. Yeah, hey. <laughs> then a little baby sea turtle climbed up on the board. And if it's in, not, if up. it's not in your same race, it's not cheating. Okay. So. Right, right. It was okay. Species. Lonnie and I were only dating yeah, then. We oh, were married. Right. We were only dating. We were only dating. dating. We were married then. That's, that makes sense. We may I, have been engaged you. though. I hear you. So yeah, so a, board, a turtle climbed up on my board, and these guys are like, "Oh, this is this Alamakua thing," and I didn't oh, know right. what that was, so I looked it up, and basically, it's like your spirit animal, That's and sweet. so that nickname kind of just stuck. Nice. Love it, love it, man. It's very cool. It's a good way to get a nickname. Yeah, it is. And so you guys went back up to the Great White North when it was kitty time. Yeah. Been there ever since. Yep. Recently moved a little closer to CPX, who you've gone to work for in the last couple of years here, right? So yep. How long is that? Has it been two years now? or uh, About two years. Two uh-huh. years. Uh, actually, yeah, we're at about two years now. Tell us what you do for them. Uh, it's basically event promotions. Uh, hmm. Basically, it started out as, can you run these type of scenario games like a Living Legends? Because at the time, we had a different producer doing it, Living Legends. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought I could. So, Paulie and I kind of sat down and figured out we could come up with a plan and it's been great. I've been running around the country trying to throw the best paintball parties I can, and we're having fun. Seems to be working. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it definitely does. Good let's response. Back, let's back up a little more. Uh, how'd you get into paintball? Where'd that come from? Uh, but in my name, Rick Albright, came back home from a trip out west, and he had a magazine, and it was all this paintball stuff in it. And he's like, look what they do in California. They hmm. can shoot each other with paintballs, and it's like this totally cool game. And him and I had been, we had found these little rubber dart kind of guns and we used to chase each other around shooting each other with those okay so i'm like this is even better it's more accurate it's cool and i immediately went out and bought everything i needed to play i didn't even have a place to go yet i just knew i was going to be into this something you wanted to do i'll get the gun i'll get the stuff and i'll figure out where i'm going to play later and uh been playing ever since nice nice and before that you were into martial arts yeah i did a lot of martial arts uh that kind of crossed over a little bit until 92 and then i pretty much retired from that uh, like World Federation Taekwondo, so like what you'd see in the Olympics. Right on, yeah. So a lot of fun. I, it was pretty flexible, so I could have a lot of fun with it. So do they fight only by belt or by weight class or weight combination? Weight and belt okay. combination. And so since I've always been, you know, kind of heavier, I've always had a fight in the – yeah, I know. It's hard to <laughs> make, make sure you get a good look and make sure you, you – know, I'm in profile. It's harder to tell. Take it, take it all. Man. Yeah. It's sexy. There's a lot of, to love here. Um, yeah, uh, so I always had to fight like the, the heavyweight guys, so they're always much bigger than I was. So the advantage that I had the flexibility was is they never once thought for a minute I could kick them in the face. So I pretty much got one free shot in every tournament where I clipped one dude in the face and then, okay, well, I, I spent that card. Now yeah. everybody saw it and went, okay, he can do that, so you have to be more careful. Yeah. So, but nice. it was fun. I like it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, something I've touched on in a previous podcast, and I think it's something we should touch on here is you agree with me that in a way and we've actually talked about it off uh not on the record about how paintball very much is like a martial art now obviously martial art refers to something that's lethal or something that can do damage to people and yeah paintball isn't lethal in that respect but it requires the same kind of discipline and actually i mean it is skills that you can use with real weapons to a degree you know so sure and i and for me I was never as big or physically in the right condition as the other guys, so I'd outsmart them. Mm-hmm. I didn't, like Taekwondo, if you've ever seen them, the first thing they do, they line you up and see jump, and that means go, mm-hmm. and they jump at each other kind of like chickens almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I always jump back a step. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not going to play the standard game. I'm going to step back, matter. you come towards me, I'm going to outsmart you. Let me assess the situation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I really focused on blocking. I'd love to say for a better reason than I didn't like to get hit, but I really just didn't like to get hit real hard. Well, so I, I went with the, I'm going to, if I get real good at blocking i can wear you out i'll get you tired you get frustrated you get bored you'll do something stupid and then i got you it, that standard jujitsu play yeah. that's that's standard actually with a lot of martial arts and i know when i started with taekwondo in particular which is one that you you've practiced it was almost all defensive right off the bat like mm-hmm. you know it was all blocks you know right. and and all your flexibility to be able to move away from stuff it, it, way before they started teaching us any kicks or any throws it was all right. This fucking upsweep gay shit, fucking trying to block stuff. And I'm like, no, I want to fuck people up, you know? <laughs> right, right. I want to learn how to knock a 
his head off. Yeah. That in the first class? Wrestling similar, you know? Yeah. Like, you, yeah. you got to watch for leg sweeps and anything coming in. or Right. I mean, you have to kind of learn to protect can, yourself yeah. before yeah. you can even really start learning the other stuff or you're just going to get beat up out there. Yeah. You know, even learn how to stop it. doesn't matter how much you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I tried to forget most of that stuff. But, like, I mean, that's that's where when, when I got into it, especially as, like, one of the smallest guys in that – Really? We got rid of our phones and jackass hair. Like, See? We did. We were Check good. Out my phone. That's right. It's official MVP business. <laughs> official? Robert, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like, no, that, that, that type of stuff is, is uh, a lot of stuff that uh, Billy and I discussed was, you know, being able to, especially for paintball players in general, um, they, they seem to be... Uh, I guess I guess more talented than in other items, mm-hmm. and this is why another reason why we started MVP was just simply because there's so much more talent and people that play paintball and excel in it. There's you know they they do other items such as like martial arts and they do dirt biking and mountain biking and whatever else. They right, excel in pretty exactly. Much anything, we talked yeah. about that too, like yeah. amongst some of our crew local that yeah. you just start noticing that. It, it's just a mentality that you take into everything. There just seems to be a thing that's in your head that you, you're you almost pathological competitive, and it doesn't have to be, like, overt where it's, like, so, like, you, you don't have to be a jerk about it, but you just see yeah. every challenge in front of you as, I have to be the best at this, and I, I can't let it go. I, I, well, I, think, I think it's human nature to, to a degree, you know? And uh, it's definitely a hardwired – It's part. It's part of, you know, like – I, I've probably said this before on the podcast, but I'll say this till I die. I mean, the whole reason we're able to sit here at this table with all this crazy technology and we have all the sophisticated shit that we have is because we are the number one apex predator on the planet. Oh, yeah. And that is built into us. I mean, we got so good at fucking shit up. I mean, we really have no interest in fucking anything else up except for each other nowadays. You know what I mean? It's, you know, I mean, it really like, you know, it's sure. that's what all this, Our you know. Our only challenges are individualism. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's so sad. You know, we got fucking... Seven billion people flying around on this rock through space, and all they care about is building nukes, so I can threaten each other with this shit. And I'm like, really? Come on, you know, right. fucking. And it and it all goes back to that, you know, it all goes back to the alpha fucking apex predator bullshit, which we need. Yeah. We definitely need it there, but we need sure. it to be able to control that thing. And, you know, and so. paintball is you're hunting. It's a great the most intelligent animal on the planet yeah. legally. It's yeah. not like. It's that very important step below oh, yeah. crazy. Yeah. Oh, where, yeah. yeah. You know, and whether it was with you or you or you two against each other, if we were doing one-on-one, I would go out there with the sole intention of I have to yeah. beat them. Whether I do or don't yeah. is irrelevant to me. I would have to try. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? there's, that whole, there's that whole aspect of what people don't realize is that recreational paintball will always be the number one source of why this sport continues oh, to grow. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's a lot of – a lot of people don't realize it because they'll either go right into, um, like, uh, everybody calls it speedball, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But, like yeah. tournament ball. So yeah, I tournament, never did it. But yeah. So the, the the weird thing is, is like you you get a lot of you get a lot of fun time out of a lot of fun time, a lot of learning out of the recreational side mm-hmm. before you go into speedball. You want people to enjoy it definitely before they oh, yeah. go into speedball and learn, you know, type of, you know, uh, standard standard movements or enjoy it. Before mm-hmm. you go into something that's just going to be so fast paced to where you're just. I never tried tournament learning. ball yeah. until I was in my 40s. Right. And I only did it because Nick Pagonis, which is one of our MDP brothers, wanted to yep. play. Nice and I needed to, okay, Nick wants to play. I need to find <laughs> a way to make that happen. Yeah. And so they put together a team and all that. And they're like, you're going to play speedball. I'm like, hey, great. Nice. I don't know what I'm doing, but <laughs> I'll figure it out. I'll run somewhere and shoot. <laughs> yeah, but you figure, you figure it out. And that's, yeah. that's probably the best jump is where people start. In the recreational sense of it, and that's how most of all of us started. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's a lot of that, uh, a lot of that sense where people don't start in that. And you sure. had a lot of lockout of people not realizing that recreational side of it is just so much more uh, adverse and fun and knowledgeable. Like you have to use a lot of that going in yeah. back to you know using your primal. Well, yeah, I mean, primal knowledge for it. Yeah. You were just you got to go walk around CP today, Camp mm-hmm. Pendleton, and you've been to Velocity. You've seen the fields to a degree there. Right. We didn't really walk out on those, but. Um, you know, these are woodsy, mm-hmm. uh, undulating terrain. And I, like, I still absolutely love that. Cause that's what I loved about it when I was a kid. Cause I could outsmart people. I'm sneaky for a big motherfucker, yeah. you know, crawling I, and doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Making and people try and find your ass while you're shooting them in the head. I love that. And that's like, you know, I got deep in the, you know, I was, you know, I was playing the, the upper levels of the tournament scene and everything like that. But honestly, 
I would say like the number one thing that burned me out on it was the repetitive nature of it. It was the same mm-hmm. fucking bunkers over and over again. Going, the same guys going the same spots, and you were just trying to beat that guy. And mm-hmm. it, you know, maybe every once in a while you got to pull back a bunker and shoot a, a, an opposite lane. But almost every time you're shooting the same fucking lane, or you're running to the same fucking spot, and it just I was like, it limits your creativity. Yeah, yeah. I'm, it I'm, limits that where I walk out on the field and I don't know what I'm doing yet mm-hmm. i'm going to i always joke people i'm the second wave every you send all the kids running oh, yeah. the game, <laughs> and i get there second and i kind of operation human shield yeah where is everybody <laughs> okay and i kind of look and i'm going that way why i'm not really sure it just seems right and i'm going over there and i'm gonna see what kind of trouble i can get into over there well i mean that that goes right along with like you know with the mdp we have our order members and then the people that are mdp but we don't consider them order or they have you know they haven't signed up for the order we call vanguard and what the vanguard was for pirates was the new guys they just sent to their dad. <laughs> so, it's nothing personal. It's, but it's, it's nothing hey, personal. You're, 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 yeah. you're young, and you know, the, you know, you, you got some shit to prove. Here, you run out there and show me what you got, and I'll yeah. clean up for you, man. So, right. Absolutely. You know. yeah. But then you, that's what you get. You get a lot of smiles out of that. Yeah. Like they love it. They sure. love going out there and just like proving themselves. Like man, go just beat the hell out of everybody while I'm on my way. In. Yeah, I mean, I've never gotten to do like a private group with like for a bachelor party or anything like that. I've never had that experience, but I have gotten to play with some private groups that. Like, I was kind of a ringer for them, you know, like company outings and sure. shit like that. Yeah. And to see, like, to be part of it, like, I'd, I'd be the guy who shot a bunch of people, but coming off the field, it's like, oh, I totally roasted you. And, you know, and just to see them, you know, and I like, I love that. I mean, yeah. you know, when we played against our own teammates, when we, you know, when we were playing competitive ball, we'd just have fun days where we were playing together or just scrimmaging. And it's awesome to get up on your buddy and be able to buy him a beer and talk shit at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And opposed to, like, Combat, even though I consider this a combat sport, there's no contact. Whereas, like, you know, again, we've done a lot of mixed martial arts and stuff like that. You hurt each other, you know, playing right. simple. Yeah. That, that's know? why I retired. I mean, I just yeah. I felt like crap for the week after a tournament. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I just can't do this to myself anymore. Even if I did well in the tournament, I still was everything hurt. I'm like, I just can't do that, yeah. you know, into my 30s anymore. I got to quit. Especially the way they used to do it back then. Whereas, I mean, you could have, you know, and I mean, I was playing, I was playing at a super low level for Taekwondo and stuff, and but you know, you could have seven fights in a day mm-hmm. you know that's fucking plus you know. board breaking yeah and you yeah. know like we we were forced you had to go fight our instructor's main thing was you had to go to tournaments you had to fight because if you and i are in the same class you have to see me again on monday mm-hmm. so you might in a weird way subconsciously pull a little yeah and not yeah. try to rip my head off that guy that i only see at the tournament could care less if he kicks my head mm-hmm. off my shoulders that's my way to really find out mm-hmm. what you can do and then it was only like an extra ten bucks to do either forms or board breaking, yeah. and I really like board breaking. That really went to yeah. my size and weight. Really worked in my favor for board breaking, so I had a lot of fun with that. That's fun, and that's actually you touched on something really good there. Whereas, like we put these, you know, we will fuck ourselves psychologically so many times. Like, they, like depending on individual teammates, there's some that I'd want to just absolutely roast their head off, and then there were some that I felt bad shooting, you know. And it, I would pay for it, like the ones where I would hesitate. They had no problem putting it all over oh, me. Because right, you know, right. you know, they're out there with yeah. the same mentality yeah. of like, oh, you know, I like that guy, but fuck Billy's dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Roast his ass, right? You know. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. And then I, I had it happen with, uh, like, it, after we got done with, like, the really trying to play the major tournament scene, we are playing pump, and there was this all pump girl team, right? Mm-hmm. And, like, when we played Femme Fatales, I, I had the same problem. And, first of all, they were, like, division down for most of the key divisions down. So, I'm like, we well, can't mm-hmm. put it all over them, you know. And, like, I didn't even play, mm-hmm. actually, a couple times. I put the rest of the team out there, and they were just – because those girls yeah. fought just as hard, you know. Sure. They're giving it up. They but, would roast oh, your yeah, ass. Yeah. But then, uh, <laughs> but the pump, I remember in particular, like we're we're crushing everybody all day long. We haven't lost a game. We come up against the girls, and I lose it because I fucking hesitated. <laughs> and they're like, "You motherfucker!" You yeah. know, fucking. It, they got a gun just they like you, right? <laughs> I and say that all the time. Yeah. They got we, a gun too. We brought brought it, so I'm in the semifinals, and I fixed it. But yeah. you know, <laughs> <laughs> you have to adjust after yeah. that. Though. Yeah. yeah. But it's, uh, you know, it's those learning experiences, those things you got to acknowledge for yourself, you know, and you can learn those in mixed martial arts and paintball. And there's all kinds of venues in your life where you can gain experience from. So you need to do that for yeah. sure, you know. Yeah, and I push hard on, like, when we got the pro level guys, tournament guys, I push on to come to our Legends games because I'm like, think about it. You get to use all your skill set, and it doesn't matter if you get shot. You can do the thing you want to do, but you're afraid to do it in a tournament environment yeah. because you put your guys in jeopardy. But mm-hmm. if you do it here, there's a thousand guys on your side. Yeah. Your one body is not a game changer. So you can actually make moves and do things that you've always wanted to try to do 
because it might work, but it, there's not such a bill at the end yeah. where it hurts everybody. Play so, it fast so and loose right? with no consequence. With, with, right? with, you, yeah. with you saying that, how much of a switch do you see a lot of – I mean, we see a whole lot of this now, and, mm-hmm. and this is something I definitely want to touch base on, is the simple fact that a lot of the retro stuff, as in, like, you know, autocockers and whatever mm-hmm. else, but you have a lot of the older guys that have kind of been off of the scene mm-hmm. coming back into these recreational tournaments mm-hmm. and starting to make their presence, and a lot of people – not really knowing where they're from, but being able to play with them again mm-hmm. on the fields with these types of tournaments that you put on. How much How much more do you think we're going to see of that? Just simply because of the retro style being so much more popular and the fact that a lot of our older, older ass turds like us that love to do this. Like, honestly, I don't, I don't ever want to play a tournament again because I did it for a while, but the recreational stuff and the people that we love to see – at these tournaments and play with and the enjoyment that we get to see people have with these tournaments. Well, that's the thing. The environment of what we put out there is, I always kind of joke that it's, it's like a pro bowl game, right? It's the environment. It's what you're going to Hawaii and it's this fancy thing. And it's all about that. And the game is, it's a little less intense and it's Mm -hmm. supposed to be the idea be there. There's intense stuff in there for the people that really want to try to be intense and do that part of the game. They can't, but you can also go out there and have Bud Orr and Dan Colby go out there next to each other and walk into a battle and fight with people yeah. and infect the game in a positive way, right. but yet they don't have to be totally into the game themselves. And then they can go wander off and sit down and have a beer with each other and, and talk, and they haven't seen each other since the last event. Right. But that's the social aspect. It's like a cocktail party you can play paintball at. It's kind of how we Definitely. describe it. The idea it. is the social aspect of it is, is as important as the game. And, and that's what makes it so special when we do these Legends events. Uh, you know, and, and I'm the biggest nerd in the world when it comes to paintball. When I'm yes. standing next to Dan Colby <laughs> or Bud Orr, I'm like, that's Dan Colby. That's <laughs> Bud Orr. I'm, I'm yeah. shooting a paintball. I got a picture. We took a 10-year-old out, me and Dan Colby, and the 10-year-old was very nervous about going out. We went out, and they got a picture of, and it's got me and Dan Colby both standing either over either shoulder shooting. And his dad's like, you don't know why this picture's cool. But someday you will. <laughs> yeah, like, right. You don't understand what you got going here. Yeah. <laughs> this is no, really that's, that's cool. Stuff, yeah. I, yeah, I love that. I love that fact about what what is continuing to go on through rec, rec tournaments, but they're getting bigger. Yeah, and and uh, the population now. That I mean, even Living Legends. What was Living Legends at this year? Uh, it was, it was a little 10? over nineteen hundred. We averaged between the years of. And, and we lost little there because we're getting it in other our satellite events. So we're losing mm-hmm. a little bit at the home event. But we average about 2,000 people for it. That's an insane amount of oh, people yeah. to be shooting paint at one time at the end, the, the final uh, the final battle. Yeah, the yeah, final the battles final are, final you know, battle. that's the main thing everybody yeah. knows about. And it's the beauty of the Legends game is anybody can play. You can have the highest pro level guy, the number one gun in tournament paintball, and play that game mm-hmm. and affect the game. And a dad and his 10-year-old son with rental gear can find can a niche the same in that thing. game mm-hmm. and do something that matters and affects the game. And the cool thing about paintball, and especially it definitely applies to the scenario paintball, is the fact that there's so many microcosms and smaller games inside the game. Like, for example, right. I don't yeah. go out of my way to do a bunch of the missions or anything right. like that. But if someone wants to run a mission and they need a bunch of people shot, I go do that for sure. them. You know? <laughs> so yeah, I, I plow the field and they come in behind me, get the mission, yeah. and get out of no, and, and that's the cool thing. And like another perfect example is like uh, Velocity was having a, a scenario. And so there's, I think we had probably like two, three hundred people there, 150 on each side. And here's this big battle is going on. And me and Nikki Cuber are opposite each other. And we basically just had a drill going in between. We would sure. only come out of a different spot each time. Yeah. And we did that for like 15 minutes. They didn't even realize that we're having a blast. There's a giant battle going on around us. You know, we're in our own little world. Sure. You know I mean, you can get those so oh, yeah. easy and so quick. It's yeah. fun, you know. And, and then we come off and I'm like, fuck, dude, I feel like I just did a jazzercise class or some <laughs> shit. <you know? laughs> that's the thing. There's so much going on inside yeah. all the aspects of it, and that's part of the game. Those kids and his dad may never know what the mission was, never know what's going on at the command structure if they didn't, you know, put effort into it. But it doesn't matter. They can still go out and have fun. You can also be absolutely involved all the way up to running missions and commanding the games and that kind of stuff. And what you want out of it, it's a spot there you can choose to do it. Yeah. You just have to find what you like. And you can change per game. You can yeah. choose to, I just want to go and plow the road for everybody and just shoot mm-hmm. like crazy. But you can choose you want to sneak around or run right. missions. And, and you can change insert to insert. It's, it's really fun to get to see people. Very few people come off the field mad. 
yeah. as opposed to tournaments where that competitive oh, juice yeah. is so yeah. flowing. And I get it. Why? But there's times people come off the field yeah. and they're mad. Their day is somewhat ruined because of what throw, just happened. Yeah, I mean, I've been charged with throwing equipment and whatever else. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, you, it's, you come off legends. It's it's really hard it's to get competitive. mad. Well, and you and you still <laughs> you, you'll still see people get hot at any paintball game. Sure. It doesn't matter scenario or tournament or anything like that. And I've been guilty. I'm sure we all have at some point in time. But now you know, being a very seasoned veteran, I very easily you know someone will be like, that person just cheated me. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> You're right. Good catch. Yeah, yeah. Keep just shoot him again. Right. <laughs> Whatever. You know, you keep just get, you gotta that, be a duck and don't exactly give a fuck. You know? Yeah. I mean, can I can I pump our brakes here? Yeah, 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 right, so, um, there. Uh, besides this one, one of the things I want to know about is tell us about your your ref crew and your guy and and your group or your teams. Ability bunch to of just fucking be weirdos. A bunch of weirdos, but honestly, <laughs> probably some of the most like dedicated ref, refing teams or refing guys or your refing group mm -hmm. has been a core group for a while, mm -hmm. and they are amazing. And they have been shot to piss in every event that they do. But like, Absolutely. just how how do you go Goonies about never like say yeah, die. serious? How do you keep them <laughs> so together and? And honestly, the most of the guys that I know, they're they're amazing. But that just tell us about them. Tell us about them and, and how you guys keep it together that way. Um, all the way from Lonnie, who Lonnie and Mikey love That's to tell my everybody. Next they, one, my next yeah. one's about your better half. Oh, so okay. let's, let's get into well, this the rest. Starting from Lonnie and Mikey <laughs> down, they they I, I have a management style. I have the ability to micromanage to death if I wanted to. So I'm very focused on right. not doing that. So I put really good people in their place, and Paulie helps me do that that we then I stay out of their way. I let them do their thing and I'm just kind of there in case they're not comfortable or it does need to get kicked all the way up to me. But for the most part, they just kill it. And my and the best thing is we've been friends for like 12 years. Almost all of us have known each other. Right, you guys have known each ever. other for a while. So we were all friends. So it's more like Stockholm's. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> At any moment, they're going to wake up and go, why are we hanging out with this guy? You know, he sits around, you know, having a rum drink at the game. We're getting the crap kicked out of us. But that's kind of it. We've been friends forever, and, and a bunch of them had gotten into the tournament scene and UWL scene, and then they got into refing the scene. So they got very comfortable refing. So I just happened to have some of my best friends in the world that also were very dedicated refs that were also scenario players, so they knew how to do it. Right. So when I go to write a game, I involve them. Here's what I want to do. How can we score it? Because that's actually like one of the hardest things when we do this. Is like, hey, oh, I yeah. want them to do this crazy thing, um, but we need a somehow a, a matrix on how to actually, you know, judge whether you did it or didn't do it. Right. Uh, we, for example, we had Billy on a hobby horse at <laughs> Dead Legends last year. I, that was that was one of the things I was going to mention. But that that was probably the closest I've been to you to where you actually had to adjust an entire tournament because and we of, did. Yeah, we did. We had a situation come up where we thought this was going to be an excellent thing to add to the game. Everybody was going to be into it. And the entire field, with the exception of like one or two guys, hated <laughs> what we did. Bonkers, and it man. went horrible wrong. And you make that move. You make that decision yeah. right now on the spot. I can either force feed this to you or I just make it go away. Right. And I made the call to make it go away. And it overall worked out well that way. You know, Besides the weather. It was, right. It was an amazing event. Right. Well, yeah, and there's other, only so much shit you can yeah. control, you know. Yeah. So. And other events, awesome you interject event, something, like, and people yeah. go nuts. You're like, wow, I didn't think that was going to be hit that well, and they love it. Yeah. It was awesome to be up there, though. Like, that was a great event. Yeah, it's that was cool. Fun. It's a cool field. Cool yeah, spot. Yeah. yeah. And it's the moments. It's yeah. the moments in everything about these paintball trips is the moments that happen that you remember forever. Well, the touchback on the fact – oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was, just – I, I, I kind of want more on your refs. Okay. Just simply because of the guys that I know, and mm -hmm. they're probably never going to be able to sit in the seat. But I kind of want you to like tell us more about the refs, because honestly, they never get enough recognition. Well, oh, absolutely not. So. Actually, they're going to be in San Diego they're in going December. To, yes, they're they going are. to. I'll be. have a little line. Some of them okay. will be. We'll have a little line outside the door. <laughs> I'm just working, man. <laughs> It's funny because, ironically, <laughs> almost all of my ref crew actually yeah. is our local MDP yeah. crew. They, they are. That's, that's kind of um, kind of why we're talking about it. Yeah, yeah, and it's just – that just shows – I mean, it's just a lifelong bond. Yeah. I mean, I, we joke all the time. We're going to be the old men yeah. somewhere in this country drinking coffee at McDonald's at 6 a.m. Yeah. and talking about shit we've been doing for 50 years. There, there are some NXL guys and a lot of the guys mm -hmm. that you've seen at CXP and, and, and that have worked through that, uh, especially when I was doing, like, stats and stuff like that. A right. lot of the guys that I had to work with there – um, are still on your group 
but right. they, they were like the major guys. Absolutely, so, they yeah. worked the pro fields yeah. at the main and tournaments. It's, so this it's is... tough. It's always tough to get like a whole like ref view of things, and right. people don't. People really don't give a crap about that. It's one of those things that is just like nonchalant. Oh, and they're so, super helpful. And like yeah. Mikey is my main ref, as my head off field ref that kind of interacts between the field and off the field. He he t- is part of every aspect I do, writing the game and organizing the game and the right. thoughts that I get. And and then you know he takes a lot of times takes my here's what I want to do, and then he refines it to All actually right. what can be done. Yeah. And it's so good at that we work real seamlessly together that way yeah. and it helps a ton because then as part of writing it he then takes it to the refs and he goes this is what we're going to do and it makes sense then yeah you know i kind of am the scatterbrain this is what i want to do and it Applied sounds great sciences and, yeah he, <laughs> well, i mean they, they work like oh i got yeah, an idea they, and mikey's like i'll figure it out you know yeah. what i mean he's they, that guy. they work their ass off and and, oh, absolutely. and you're and you're at the you're at the you're at the helm of that and that's that's one reason why i would i really wanted to bring that up because they are honestly some of the freaking greatest guys that I've ever been sure. around. It's a great and, bunch. Like, like high events of like nineteen hundred people. That's a that's crazy. Yeah. Especially yeah. when I'm on top of that hill where they're just getting laced. Oh, and, absolutely. So. And it's the most unappreciated job on the fucking <laughs> yeah, planet. You know, every every time every time I go play paintball <laughs> yeah. at any given field, I always thank the refs, man. Yeah. Because you know I've done it. I've been the guy there, and I haven't done it a lot because I've been like this yeah. you know <laughs> right. there's but a I, reason i, I don't yeah. ref on yeah, the field. there, there are like, people that are content yeah. with it and those right. guys are just they're amazing and I, your crew i definitely wanted you to touch base on those because oh absolutely those yeah. guys are awesome i can't say enough about them yeah. as what they do and they always have a good attitude towards it they've right. never said no no matter what crazy thing we've done like the hills crazy the valley of yeah. death in uh dreaded legends I, I in think florida that, i think that's why one of the one of the reasons why legends is so successful is because your guys is refing your refing crew is just they're always there they're always helpful yep. like and anything i've seen you know besides that away from what i'm doing or whatever me conversating with them because i know right. them but watching them interact with most of the general public is just it's phenomenal yeah and they're, they're, they're amazing and they make those they make those events yes. well, so they're biased as hell but i think they're the best in the business yeah. well they you know they care and love about they love paintball they're obviously not doing it for the fucking money no you know <laughs> so and, and i mean fuck every time i'll see them every chance they get they'll break away and you know if they only get 15 minutes of gameplay, at least they got that. You know? Right. And I'm, I try to work out little yeah. weird things like that for right. them. And there's certain refs that we like, don't inv- don't let them ref certain games. Like, no, you've ref like three in a row. Go play this one. Right. Mm-hmm. Come down, play this one, have fun, get it, get your fix, get yeah. your moment yeah. and do that kind of stuff. And it helps. It, it helps a good disposition with the guys. Everybody interacts. Nobody's really higher or lower than anybody else. So there's a lot of interaction, stuff like that. And we spend a lot of time off the field nice. in a ref house on purpose. We have one big ref house and it's away from everybody else. So we can go back and 90% of the bonding that makes the crew yeah. so relaxed and so fun is that time. One together. big Roman yeah. shower. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's creepy, but you know, it's all right. <laughs> one just giant bar of soap. That's <laughs> it. Your turn. <laughs> First, you guys lather me up and I'll just stand in the middle and you all just rub on me. That's right. Mikey will be standing over there making sarcastic comments and Oh, this this is taking a weird turn. Yeah, we're just getting our toes wet right now. We're just, just making sure we had enough rum in our like, drinks. Shit, man, we're getting deep. Yeah. Uh, go go for it. Well, yeah, I just wanted to throw, you know, back on the social aspect of the scenario games and you know, it's there with the tournament scene, but the tournament scene, you come to play. That's the the, right. the focus, you know, whereas the scenario the focus is the atmosphere and the social environment, you know, at least for me, there's a lot, you, you can have your focus on the play. That's fine. But like an individual such as myself, who is hindered by, you know, old injuries and shit, I'm only gonna be able to play for so long before my knee fucks up or my back fucks up and I'm done, you know? So, and usually I only get like a day, maybe a day and a half, and you know, and sometimes these events are two, three days long. So, but at least the rest of the time I got people I get to hang out with and see that I love and care about and known for a long fucking time, get to meet some new people. That's honestly, that's, that's some of the best part of it. Like, Mm -hmm. and it was tough. Uh, We've talked about it already. It was tough for me to get back into the, like the recreational side of it. Cause Mm -hmm. I was like, I know I'm going to be there for like a week. I know it, Mm -hmm. but it just, just, and, and that's why I touched down on things like that. It's just so much more fun to have people that are dedicated to it, but it's, it is, it is, we're getting older. That was the hardest part for me, actually, when we started doing these events is to kind of, I had to change my mentality on what I, my 
my joy from the game because my joy from the game was affecting the game and doing what I did to kind of mm-hmm. get noticed in the first place, and I don't get to do that anymore. Right. So now my payoff is at the end when people walk off the field smiling. Yeah. And it, it took – I mean, it honestly, it took a little bit for me to totally appreciate that because there was a little bit of like, man, I want to be out there. I want to be doing this. <laughs> yeah. Right. You yeah. know, and but you can't. I mean, you no. just can't. You have stuff you have to do. So – but – I've really gotten more comfortable with it now, and I love it. And that smile when they come off and they're like, I can't wait to do it again. You're like, that's it. It was worth it. Every single minute was worth it because they're coming off smiling. They're happy. Yeah. And you get that a lot from the Legends events. Like right. you, you see that constantly. And it's it's every event, everyone yeah. that we've been to. And like everybody that we even, – even the newer people that we meet up or stay there a little longer just to shake hands and right. and, and, and tilt – Tilt one back. Just the whole meeting on the go. top yeah. of the hill thing and shaking oh, hands man, at dude, the end of the game. Amazing. I mean, think about the sportsmanship. You have been beating the hell out of each other for yeah. two days straight, and then the final thing we do is put you in a very small, condensed yeah. area yeah. and let you really tear into each other. <laughs> and the and then second it's hands. done, they go up on top of the hill and they shake hands Love and it. congratulate that guy for having the guts to stand across yeah. from me because I'm a good player and you're a good player. It took some coconuts to do the it. The award ceremonies are spectacular. Yeah, yeah I, I just love the, the nightlife during it. The award ceremonies, everything there is just it's it's above and beyond. Yeah, hats off to the Dagnios. I mean, they're the ones who really you know they created this vibe with this style of game, you know, and then the people that they hire and that work with them that help continue that, you know, right? Because you know, I'd been to a lot of scenario games before I came to Legends, and I got there, I'm like, okay, this is the way it's supposed to be, Mm -hmm. you know, this is hundred percent. I mean, I came to Legends one as a player, yeah, and I'm like, this is the coolest thing I've ever done in my life. This is so neat, and it just shows where they came from. They they picked up on something that nobody else had picked up on, Find that and they niche. really, yeah. And, and it's funny because we kind of joke sometimes. You'll see people like not really copying it, but they're trying to go off that pattern, mm-hmm. and they they miss a little bit. Yeah. And you're like, that's because it wasn't organic. You didn't think of it. Yeah. You didn't come with it. And it's fun to watch. Yeah. You know, Paulie's a genius. We all know Paulie. He's yeah. just genius how he does it. Mike's. Nice and the mellow, calm one that helps me kind of like think of things to do. Yeah, yeah there's the, definitely they're some the bodies the in the basement there. <laughs> right, they're, they're the white and the weak. Dad still scares the crap it's out of me, which he should, you know. Yeah. And uh, I mean, all in all, it, it, I couldn't ask for a better situation. Okay. They yeah. absolutely picked me out of the crowd randomly awesome. and went, "We're going to do something with you," and open a ton of doors, and right. it was the best thing ever. I'm glad you you kick those doors in. It's it's <laughs> nice, man. It's, yeah. it's been it's been fantastic. So. And that was the beauty of it. They yeah. would they open the door, but then I had to do something next. You know what I mean? Like oh, you here, I open the door, in, you go in, in and do this, and then <laughs> when you've proven yourself in this room, we'll open another door for right. you. And I can't thank them enough. And you know they were they were great at mentoring too, especially when you make mistakes because you do. No matter what you're trying to do, what your goal is, you're going to make mistakes. And have somebody sit there like they don't come down on you. They pull you aside and like, look, this is. You see why this went horribly wrong, right? <laughs> don't do this, you know. And and this is a better way to do it. And they yeah. really help guide. The whole thing, awesome. and it's been great. Yeah, they understand that it's being constructive is the only thing that's going to help there. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Like it's 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 it shows it shows for sure. So I know your next question was something involving Lonnie about well, let's, let's about go. the better half. I love that lady. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta go, you gotta go further. We you, we are you already said how you guys met, but we got to know more about like how your guys is uh, how your guys is. I hate saying that. How. You alls, hey y'all. Shit. <laughs> how, how you guys? How you guys have gone where you're at, and and why she is just yeah. My intention for this, yeah. when you know, the whole time I've envisioned a podcast with with, with him is with Lonnie. Yeah, yeah we're both really, really, so, you know, yeah. Because this here, is the weirdest yeah. aspect yeah. ever. I, right? She's not here. Yeah, right. And that never happens. <laughs> yeah, right? I, I've never met another couple. She will be in like, December. Oh, yeah, she will be in December. We'll, like, do, we we'll are, do it again in December. But I want I want your take on that on on exactly. How you guys met, where it went. Just give us a, a sure. quick calendar on it. What are we looking um, at, Billy? There was a bar. The cat wanted to be in the uh, fucking video. You. We uh, <laughs> The cat has been stalking me all weekend. Uh, Don't get near me. Um, <laughs> we met at a bar in Oshkosh. Her best friend and my best friend were dating. So her and I kind of got coupled up while they were all being, you know, Touchy romantic feeling. and all that shit. The third wheels. Yeah, absolutely. So we were just kind of talking, and I made some smart-ass comment about whether she looked good in a bikini or not. And she made a really great smart-ass comment back. And I'm like, all right. I'm liking that. Remember that. Here, yeah. right? I'm like, all right, we're going to play a little verbal tennis back and forth. And we spent the night just, you know, bouncing smart ass comments off each other. Awesome. And I'm like, this chick's totally cool. She is like the funnest person I've ever hung out with. Awesome. And we were friends, both dating other people for about a year and a half before we actually decided, 
fucking you know, sluts. Why are we dating other people when we enjoy each other's company so much? Wisconsin force. Yes, I, I, I do hold it over her head that she pursued me. Uh, I like to hold it uh, when, when she's looking at me with that "why are you so dumb" look. Mm. I'm like, your idea. Yeah. This whole thing was your idea. Yeah, yeah you bought this package. Yeah, she, you loops. came into this willing, and of course, her answer is, "Well, I drank a lot." Yeah, right? <laughs> Awesome. So, yeah, and she's been great. She, you know, everybody says they want to marry their best friend. She'd be my best friend whether we were married or not. We would hang she's out awesome, to this day. She's just yeah. totally chill. Yeah. She just hangs with everybody, goes with the flow. She has done so many things to move bills around, juggle days off, all these things to put me where I need to be to to get where I am. She, That's good support. There was just That's no awesome. way it was going to happen if she didn't find a way to put me in the right spot at the right time and – and it was never easy, and she found a way. She's just so cool. Awesome. There's no other way to say it. I mean, it's like, oh, romantic, all love. We don't do that. <laughs> so you're no, cool. So, yeah, you're you're just, are, you are the retard. You are the coolest girl. I, you're the coolest you person. You are full cool retard, oh, and definitely. she's like, I got this. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, honey, I got an idea, and you just watch her go. <laughs> Later, yeah, I mean. Oh, well, you just had that happen last night, <laughs> yeah. right? <laughs> it looks good, though, honey. See, palm tree, it looks really good. Yeah. You gotta love my bosses. Like, you know, he gives me a little bit. He's like, "Did I buy you a tattoo last night?" I'm like, "Yes, you did." And he's like, "Classic." <laughs> sure love did. you. That's that awesome. Sense. Yeah. Then oh, go for it. back on the the social aspect again of paintball. Like, I was on the fence whether I was gonna go play Decay this weekend or not. Just plain and simple, it's always hot as shit up there, and I have a bad knee. And I didn't, you know, I was like, "I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go." And then it it's is the last hot couple, as shit right now. Yeah, like yeah, I've you've been working up there, so you know. <laughs> it's yeah. Hot as shit up there right now. Long story short, my knee's been fucking up, so I'm just like, no, nah, I'm not doing it. But I am still going to make the trip out there just to see people. You know, the, right. again, the social aspect. Got to see the friends and, you know. We got to shake right. hands. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'm right. up there. Oh, we'll, no matter we'll what, talk about talk. this after this, but yeah. I want to go with you on Sundays. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. it. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good time. I'm actually hoping to hit up Carlos Robios and uh, see if we can get a motorcycle ride in while we're up there. Oh, But right. he, he just had a baby, so we'll see. Oh. We'll see. I like all of this. Has plan. he sold right. his bike yet? Oh, no, no. He just got the bike. <laughs> yeah. They just, like a month before the kid popped out. How awesome is that? I'm like, yes, you go. What the fuck? <laughs> so good. Just cover it. Cover yeah. it and like hide it. Right. Yep. So Let her put laundry work. on it if that's what's going to make it work. No, he scored, man. She's cool as shit. They, they work really good together and they're getting their family going. It's awesome. But uh, yeah, hopefully we can get that's her right it right that's he, what we did. We said we're like we're like we can be poor and have kids now, or we can never quite be ever have money and have kids later. Let's have them early because <laughs> yeah. we're already poor. Might as well, we're just getting poorer. Right. And but then they're out of here. I'm like, my daughter's my dude. My daughter's twenty. I don't have to worry about that. I got two so. dipping out of the house in the next three years. <laughs> See ya. Love ya. Right when you get you'll work, miss it. you'll miss them. You'll miss. <laughs> oh, it's I, great, but you're gonna miss. Them I'm gonna be the basket so. case, not Lonnie. I'm gonna be the one that's like the kids aren't here. If they're they're gone for like a long weekend doing something, I'm like. It just it doesn't feel right because I work out of the house now most yeah. of the time. So, so all summer they're there it's and so we're talking, fun. we're hanging out and they're, and they're 15 and 17. So they're fun now. Yeah. We, it's oh, guy yeah. stuff. We, no, we, no. we watch movies and you know, a girl come on and her top will come off and we're like, yeah. And Lottie's like, really? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and like we'll joke about Babies. that and let's do this Babies. to irritate mom stuff kind of thing. Right. So we're really, it's a really fun time for us with it's the that, boys. Is that that fork jab? Yeah. But I got oh, you. is that bugging you really? Let me, let's let's rev that up. Awesome. And uh, and it's fun. So then they went back to school, and I'm like, it is too quiet in this house right now. So I'm like, yeah, it was weird. It's like, it's like let's go for a ride. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, that's it. yeah, that's exactly where we're at with that now. Is because you just recently you purchased a motorcycle. You had one way yeah. back in the day, oh, but yeah, four kids. On yeah, yeah, the the BC. Right. <laughs> four children. Yeah. And, and now I we love got, it. I yeah, love yeah. It. So that was it. Uh, you just picked up a big ass Honda. Is that yeah, Honda it? VTX 1300. Nice, nice, love it. Yeah, that's what you're riding just at. Got a new front end we're talking just put about a brand new fairing on the front because I'm too short to see you over the other windshield. To be honest. <laughs> I'm a little brutally honest, I can't see over my windshield. You were at so. Sturgis. Tell us how you enjoyed that. Oh, that was so cool. So cool. We did a marathon drive out there. And they were all, and Billy and everybody that was out there was like worried to death. So you like, drove out there. I let drove everybody, out there. As you go into this, let everybody who doesn't have a motorcycle know about the drive part and what you can do as you talk about it. Okay. So, so we loaded we, up we the bike. We do it all the time. Yeah. I just want you we to loaded a bike there. up in the trailer and drove the bike out there because we had to leave after working all day. So we got up at six in the morning, worked our full day. She got home. We jumped in a car at six at night and drove and arrived at six the following morning without really sleeping. And they were concerned because they're like they they saved the best ride all for the whole week. Yeah, we only us. had like a fourteen hour day for them. <laughs> so, you know, we're going on a fourteen hour day. Yeah. It's yeah. like you look at the video; all the guys.
guys are jumping in the water at the one part and having a great time. I'm sleeping on my coat. I got my face down in my coat. I'm like, ooh, 10 minutes not on a bike. Nappy. Right. You know, and it, yeah, I'm just going to lay with my eyes closed and see what happens. But it was it was absolutely worth it. It was totally cool. We figured it out. We were up for like 41 hours straight before we finally went to bed. It's a good run. Totally nice. worth it. And then, you know, we wake up well rested, and then the rest of the weekend was just a riot. We went and saw bands and rides, and just, I saw, like, a famous bike builder I always kind of admired, and I chased him down, absolutely nerd fanboy into, like, a clothing (laughs) store and got a picture with him, and, yeah, oh, yeah, I was total geek. I'm like, hi, can I have your picture? Not not, not to sound like too much of a dick, but I was going to offer to switch bikes with you, but I honestly... I don't know if I could touch the ground. Well, I don't know if you could see over my fairing either. So. That's fair. And my That's fairing, fair. and my That's fairing so is com- we had that conversation. It's completely black. It. There's no seeing yeah. through it. You know, so that, that sad. Why do you think I bought a smoke? Like, I, part I'm of picking totally my right. bike was like, oh, I can touch the ground. I can chop it. I can buy this one if I want. I'll go for yeah. it. Right. Yeah, and then it was purple, so Lonnie was in. You know? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, she used to have her own bike too. I always like to point that out because the only reason mm. she's riding on the back of my bike is she just liked hanging out and being able to talk to me while we were out. And we were talking about she wants the armrest. Yeah, she. wants wants me to go full grandpa bike and i'm not there i don't want a cup holder on my bike yeah rach tried to have that conversation with me i said this is as comfortable as it gets i mean i I mean i might you know we can change out the seat but you're not gonna see some big ass you know luggage box with fucking backrests and (laughs) now the plus side we've come to like i said to you we we came to an agreement we can get the grandpa bike as long as I keep the other bike. Oh, right. So yeah. when I'm just riding around or shooting around, that's when all that other I've got shit mine. Gets right. If yeah. We, yeah, I'm I'm taking this bike that I got <laughs> so and I'm stripping lighter. parts off as I can <laughs> and and thinning it just out. Just buy the same bike and turn it into a grandpa bike. That way you're not losing parts because right, you just trade them. Does, you, you trust me, two different bikes. It makes your life miserable. Yeah, well, probably. I already have a kind of little parts does. collection going that I'm not sure what I'm going to do yeah. with. Cause, you know, if I get another bike, the same exact one, and just like turn that into like a hot rod right? type bike. Well, just, your uh, switchback is specifically supposed to be able to switch back and forth. Yeah. To, oh, yeah, yeah it, right? it does. Yeah. I just don't want to take anything off. Not so much with the, the new fairing, though, right? Yeah, no. no yeah, that's, Not the new fairing. No, that's on there. That came together it's well. A, <laughs> no, it's not on there. Yeah. I could take it off, but no, I, I a little got more it commu- where, committed. I got it to where it's on there. Yeah, right on. Yeah, but no, like same same shit. But yeah. I th- I think honestly, like man, having a shovel head and a fucking in a in that bike. Yeah, I can't. I would rather be able to like. I'd rather have a Dyna and that yeah. switch back and be like, okay, yeah, this is great. I can switch that over. Jump on that bad boy when I want to do that. Well, or the, whatever. The yeah. shovel's got you by the balls because it's family piece and. It's, yeah, no, it's going. And I don't want. It. If you want to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's going away. It's, it's been so away. fun. I'm going to sell it. But, well, that's yeah. it. I truly didn't know how much I missed riding a bike until I got back yeah. on one. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I make excuses to go to the store for Lonnie. Yeah. She's like, oh, I need this. We'll get it tomorrow <laughs> shopping. No, I'll go now. No, <laughs> right, no, yeah, like, no. I, I got home from a 14-hour in the car from running Endless, and I hadn't slept right. more than like four hours a night. I had an eight-hour window to sleep before I had to catch my flight to come here, and my new fairing had come in with the brackets. So I quick threw it on the bike and then went away for a half an hour just to make sure it worked. Yeah, I right. kind of held my visit up yesterday because I got my new mirrors in. So. See? That's it. And I got home. She's like, you really went for a half an hour ride? Right? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I miss my baby. Yeah. <laughs> you, you start fainting. People – you know, yeah, I mean, just like, I mean, getting lightheaded. we talk a lot about <laughs> paintball and you can, you know, that is especially true. when you have the drive, you can really miss paintball really quick, miss shooting at people. And you absolutely know, same exact thing with motorcycles. Like you, you know, you don't, you get kind of itchy and just like, shit, I need to go for a ride. And I don't give a fuck if I'm going anywhere. You know, it just happened to me. Like I told you sure, just on yeah. Sunday, I was, I was in kind of a weird funk all day and just kind of get in a groove and I was trying to do work. Can I do anything? And then, yeah, I'm just like, Hey, Rach. I'm gonna go for a ride. She's like, "Where are you going?" I'm like, "Yeah, no." <laughs> I'll let you know when I get there. That way, right? yeah. South, yeah. I think south. Yeah. So, what do you, what do you think? As in, like people going there without a motorcycle? Oh, you could totally do that. Yeah, you could absolutely go there and have a very very fun time without a motorcycle. I mean, the rides are cool. I'm not gonna say they're not, but any of the rides we do with the bikes, you could follow in yeah. a car mm-hmm. and. When we, it's, it's not just the rides. The rides are cool in your car, zipping around in yeah. turns and all the curves. Yeah. And plus, we get to lots of destinations that are cool and get off the bikes. Yeah. The bikes are a means to yeah. The, yeah. get there. The, so The rides are definitely vital. But and, sure. and another thing is there's a ton of rental stuff there. Like they got Can-Ams and they got right. uh, Vanderhalls and they got those – spaceship fucking things on but they're they're all they they all have three wheels and they're they're semi-motorcycle-esque where you're in the elements but you can drive it on a car license so if you're there 
drive there, rent one for the day, have it all lined up. Sure. So one specific yeah. ride that we are happening to do, and you can do that and experience it that way without having to go through the hassle of getting a motorcycle license or worrying about trying to ride a bike on two wheels. You got a stability of three. It's just like driving a fucking car. It yeah. really is. You know, I'm so. glad you guys got to go there. That's it. Oh, and it's, it's great because awesome. like I'm leaving from here next week right and i go home i'm home two days and we're gonna go do the dragon's tail run in tennessee oh, with shit. like a bunch of the east coast pirates yeah Most we're gonna go do that and there. i live in the right spot in the country i'm like i can do that one and then i can do that one and again yeah. hey honey i got an idea <sighs> yeah, right. okay what do i gotta do and she <laughs> figures it out you know yeah. and it's funny because like just to touch base on what you said about the whole the vibe thing i really like you, you know, guys but i gotta pee yeah Polly yeah, breaks that out Polly actually that just shows how much he thinks of that stuff he actually makes me go to play local paintball games just to go play. Yeah. He's like, I know you need it for your vibe and you can't just be running games and not experience it. So he actually like, you're going this weekend to play paintball summer, go. Yeah. And sends me, it's really cool that he takes the time to think of that. Well, it's because, and, you know, he still goes very rarely, but he'll still put on a shit and go out and play. You know, I mean, right. he started, he grew up playing paintball. He loves right. paintball. That's why he's in it. this. He gets, he gets the gets release it. Yeah. Yeah. of it. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. big. It's yeah. big. I mean, his family has been involved in it for a very long time. Okay. So, yeah. And, uh, we could go on that one forever. Let's right. keep talking about motorcycles. Motorcycles. <laughs> oh, motorcycles. So we've been riding since we've been here. Yes. What have you thought of that experience? So cool. Yeah. Yeah. The the bike was it the barnacle black barnacle yeah. is that what we're calling yeah. it? Yeah. It's cool because it's funny how you tried another bike. Um, it's thinner, lighter than my bike, yeah. so it's way sportier, and the handlebars are in. So like okay. the first time we went riding, I'm like, okay, I'm a little slow. Billy, Billy's motoring away. I'll catch up in a second. I kind of get the feel. Now we're just zipping in and yeah. out of turns, and yeah. you know, it only takes a little while, and I love that bike. We're having a good time. Yeah, it's a pretty – I mean, picked it up from one of our order members. It's an older bike. It's almost 20 years old, but, you know, it's been completely gone through, and it's running good, and it's, uh, it's kind of similar to – even though it's an 800 cc, I, I would give it a little. It's a little beefier than a sportster. Yeah, I think so too. I would say, you know, but it's yeah. kind of along those lines. It's more of a yeah. more of a bar hopper than a, a distance bike. But I mean, shit, we've done two days of 90 or 100 miles. And, yeah, it's a little light yeah. on the top end when you yeah. have the bigger engine and you're yeah. already we're already moving and you go wah and take yeah. off. Yeah. I got to catch up. It just isn't going to take off like that once yeah. we're moving. But I can pop off of the light. Yeah, pretty quick. Yeah, that's pretty light. You know, I, I spent I spent a couple days riding it, make sure it was all dialed for you. And like one of the things I noticed was that thing had great mid-range like i mean mm -hmm. like like when we're on the the mountain roads and everything super fun that bike's super fun and, and plus very nimble yeah exactly. i can really lean in almost feels more like a sport bike it's yeah. kind of weird yeah, yeah that's what i noticed i was like i wonder if these are the same shocks or off like a gsxr or something like that yeah, but, you know I was totally into it. but yeah it's and, a, and the fact you keep it like all right do you want to take the car or you want to take the bike i'm like take the bike let's yeah. take the bike yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm all for it i was i was hoping you were into that for going sunday that's, and yeah that's what i do let's take a bike right out of it yeah because same thing at home. It just yeah. – and my riding season's got, you know, yeah. due dates. you got a window. At a yeah. certain point, it's going to get really, really uncomfortable on the bike. <laughs> I'm back. How was your pee? <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> Did you yeah, – is there a big sense a, of relief? I peed a gallon. <laughs> it totally should have had to make me know where I'm drinking. Where, right. where are we at? What are we at? Or do we have more? Because we, we can keep rolling. All right. Awesome. Because um, – I want to get into the thick of it. Let's uh -oh. get into the thick of it. So I mean, it gets too long. We can make a part two, but I mean, fuck, I've run an hour and forty-five minutes on this. Uh, We're only okay. Let's this. run it. Let's run it. So under that, under you, that idea, you, Senior DJ Hanu Fox, um, <laughs> how do you feel about, or how have you been like influenced by MDP, and how do you like to, I don't want to say project it onto other people, mm -hmm. but try to let people how do you know. give them your virus how do you my give virus. them your virus <laughs> you're gonna how do you let people an itchy know? sensation like, like just, <laughs> just after after what you think of what we what what billy has has brought to us and what we've all you know had the train leave the station and let it run um what do you have to say to everybody else to you know that's too much i know what you're going well, for uh, yeah i so got you go for it well, I told Billy relatively early in the process of hearing about MDP, I'm like, this is this is the group of people I needed in my life that I didn't know I needed in my life. Because I was doing a lot of these things on my own when it came to what I wanted to do. But it's one thing to want to go do an adventure, but it's not as much fun unless you have other people that you can share that experience with. Those moments that you, you look at some guy you've known 30 years, and you can look at him, and immediately in your head, you fast forward through every cool thing you've ever done with that dude. 
every time you see him after you haven't seen him for a while. And yeah. I think that's part of it is the whole, you know, well, why not? Let's go do this. Well, what if it doesn't work? Well, what if it does? Yeah. You know, I've always been a what if it does kind of guy. I, I pretty much give off a fairly good positive vibe. I, I just like doing anything new. Go to a restaurant, try something I've never tried. Why? Well, it might be great. Well, it might you be do bad. a lot of that. Nah, I like, have, yeah. clearly. <laughs> but just stuff like that. Like we were joking, I have a rule. When we go to one of these events, you can't eat at a national chain. You have Ooh. to try something that's only local. Right, yeah. I because love that. when else is it going to come up? Yeah. You know, I took my kids in a helicopter because when else is that going to come up? Right. You know, try everything once, do anything you want that's fun twice. Yeah. We've done a lot of that to where we've actually gone to events to where you can't even just get away from that area. Right. So when you're able to do that type of stuff with, with what you do, it's that's that's an awesome feeling because you can at least experience something within that area. Like you guys are just talking about just the motorcycle yeah. ride. Like you got to see a lot of San Diego. From coming from Billy's house to just die, like you see a oh, absolutely. good portion of it. So yeah, yeah no. And then the thing about M- MDP that I find so intriguing is it's a whole group of people that have that same thought process, that same mentality of yeah, let's go. Of course we're going helicopter riding. Of course we're going yeah. rock climbing. Of course we're gonna do. This. Right. Why why wouldn't we do that? <clears throat> As opposed to you have that group of friends like hey let's go do this and they're like uh, and they're not into it and, and that's time. fine. <laughs> that's that's for you, but like. I don't want to binge watch a television show if I can do anything else. I mean, I'll do it, and winters are long. That's when I do that. Right, yeah, yeah. You know, but I just – that whole idea of go do anything else is better than sitting on your couch right. and, and finding a like-minded group of people that have a real mellow vibe, and they don't care what you're into. I could be totally into motorcycles, and another guy in MDP doesn't have to be into motorcycles in the least, yeah. but he gets why I do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's the same mentality. It's that same Even background. if he's following you to like, hey, we're going to go to a bar that we've never been to. Or, hey, right. we're going to a restaurant that we've never been to. Right. Again, yeah. that's that's something that we do a lot of. So, yeah. right. awesome. And it's the same mentality. And it's across the board. You start talking to people and they all nod their heads. Right. They're like, I get it. I'm, yeah. I'm into that's that same that, idea. Yeah, good, good idea. Let's you know, right. It. And what if it sucks? Well, then that's a moment. Yeah. That's a moment in time that <laughs> yeah. we'll remember, boy, that was a bad idea. That didn't work out at all. Yeah. I'd much rather say, you know, I... Wish I hadn't have done that, then you know, shit. I wish I would have done that right. in my life. Right. You know, yeah. but right. you know, every day, yeah, every day, no. every day. The, you know, nobody ever tells a story yeah. about. Gee, I wish I you know, watched more Netflix. You know, <laughs> yeah. before I died. That yeah. never comes. And yeah. if it does. That's good for you, but not for me. No, that's well, my well. last breath. I want yeah. more Netflix. You know, I absolutely, I absolutely <laughs> want to look at each other and be like, turn the TV back on <laughs> one more time. Oh, the Friends theme. Uh. <laughs> And, 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 and those people are out there, you know, it's different sure, strokes yeah, for different yeah. folks, and, but that, that's not us, you know, and yeah. that's, but I, I knew there's... You never know, we can always find, like, an international, like, soap opera watching. Well... Modern Day Pirates, you never know. You never know. <laughs> and, and I'm not judging, I'm not saying, no. it's just like the whole... Like, <laughs> that's the best thing, it's not this judging. This is the thing, and this, this is what makes you happy. All power do. Yeah. All I want is people to be happy. I hate crazy yeah. people. They're no fun at all. Yeah. Be happy. And, and I don't want to be pigeonholed. That was a big right. part, you know, yeah. that's why we're an adventure society. We're not a motorcycle club, we're not a fishing club, we're not a hunting club, we're not a paint club we're we're an adventure we're we're just a big social yeah. club really you know but yeah. with vetted members so we know we right. can trust this fucker they're not yeah. gonna sell my kidneys you know at least you know depending <laughs> on how much we get those but we get those <laughs> i've never been there but you know, i just want to make sure that my guys can handle that yeah right <laughs> absolutely and and you guys obviously you started this thing so you get it more than anybody else it's yeah. you start picking these guys out in the crowd you can almost like see them when you walk into a room you're like oh, yeah that guy that yeah. guy's gonna go do something stupid with me, and it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, it's gonna that's be a this, pirate. That's yeah, a pirate. that dude's gonna be a pirate. You didn't even know it yet, but he's gonna go off on this crazy ass adventure with me. Yeah. And we're gonna have so much fun, and I don't even know what it is yet. Yeah. I don't even know what we're doing yet, but it's I know it's gonna be random great. likeness. Yeah, it's just it's it's an it's incredible how often you find it. Oh it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, I mean, in developing these concepts, it was it was really more out of frustration than anything because I'd see so many like there's so many things that have so many components of what the MVP does but they're lacking the key things to me you know and that's like perfect example is like I give you is like the Freemasons or Elks or something like that they have a giant sense of community but all it is is fucking buffets yeah. right you know, right. <laughs> you know they, right. they all get together for big big group buffets <laughs> where we, where we and, and, then, and then they have requirements and you have to believe in some some kind of deity or something like that you know which no <laughs> no, we can't. No, they, let's right. not fuck our lives up with that kind of shit, right. you know. And, and then same thing with motorcycle clubs. I mean, like, there's some awesome motorcycle clubs out there that do a lot of really good shit and everything, but it's only motorcycle clubs. I mean, 
right. only yeah. motorcycles. You know, perfect day. I drive my motorcycle to a paintball event, play paintball, right. yeah. go out some weird dinner. Like we were talking, like you're like there's you're in California. We're taking to this Mexican place because it's like yeah. the best food ever. And then we're gonna drive motorcycles home. And I'm gonna sit down and drink rum with my friends who are into drinking rum. That's a well-rounded day of yeah. awesomeness, and yeah. and. That plan may change the second we get on the bikes. That may mm-hmm. be the plan walking out the door, and the whole thing can change. Yeah. And all you can do, do is like, lot. let's go. Yeah, I mean, we way, do that a lot. way back in the day, fucking, like, and Chewy, I, I love to see it because, like, I didn't know Chewy until, uh, like, 2005, 2006. But, like, way back, like, early 90s, 2000s, I would set days like that. That was, like, my goal. I'd be like, okay, I'm surfing in the morning. I'm riding my motorcycle to the paintball field. I'm playing paintball. As soon as I get done with paintball, I'm heading – up the mountain and going snowboarding all day nice and ride. you know and it would, how many things can we pack into this fucking weekend you know right. and, and and not that you have to be like that because like I, especially now i have to recharge my batteries quite a bit you know? right. that's a real thing too <laughs> you know yeah, I mean, but even even that can be day. its own adventure in its own way yeah. you can have an adventure on your couch when it comes to just chilling out because you're planning the next one. Sometimes there's oh, some yeah. downtime to get ready yeah. for the next big one. Yeah. You know, because as soon as I'm done with that motorcycle run, well, then I just have paintball games ahead of me that are a few months out. Well, now I got to actually work. Mm-hmm. But that's adventurous because I get to think of all this crazy stuff. What did I always want to put in a paintball game? Boom, I get to yeah. throw it in there. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't work out, well, we'll find out. We'll, we'll work it we'll out. We'll change it. Yeah, we'll change it. Yeah. We'll come up with something. You know, I did a bunch of stuff at Endless Legends that I, you know, that could have gone either like you're going to love this or they're going to hate it. You know, because we put a bunch of, like, layered puzzles in there. And, like, this mission only laid up to the next one and led to the next one and the next one. And then at the end of it, you got a 3D puzzle to put together. And I I never had so many people swearing at me with smiles on their faces. <laughs> and I'm like, right, they're smiling and swearing. I'm calling that good. That's just how we're communicating. Yeah, we're good. Right? You know, and, and they loved it. And they really enjoyed it. And it, it could have been good. It could have been terrible. You don't know until you do it. Oh, yeah. Not until you try it. Right. You don't just can't it. have the fear not to do it. Yeah. You yeah. know. I love it. So what's next for you? Next. Mm. What's the next adventure? What's something you want to try you haven't tried yet? Something I want to try. I want to go scuba diving in like the Caribbean. Right I've on. never done that. I've done snorkeling and stuff in Florida when we lived there. But I've never actually like legit gone like scuba diving with turtles. I have a Hanu thing going, so I yeah. would love to be able to go swimming with turtles. Um, oh, actually, we have something really exciting coming up. The wedding. Oh, yeah. The wedding sure. is actually the next big personal thing next. <laughs> uh, every 10 years, I give Lonnie a chance to re-up. So uh, last time we did it was uh, at Oklahoma D-Day, All right. and they actually filmed it for uh, Soldiers of Paint. Oh, yeah, I remember. It so was that was on Netflix. Yep. And yep. Uh, this year, we're going to do a pirate wedding down there, and Dana Turner and nice. Hell member is going to actually be uh, the official of it. What is this? Uh, at Friday night at Dreaded. We're going to get remarried. I guess uh, I'm going to dread it. Yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> but wait, there's more. Ooh, when the events is done, me. we're going to ride down to Miami on motorcycles and meet up with uh, John Navarro and oh, some of his friends and stuff like that. Is and that then we're going to the Keys for the honeymoon. Oh, I'm yeah. taking well, well, I'm taking way off. Yeah. yeah, yeah we got to go buy some lottery tickets. <laughs> yeah, we're riding motorcycles <laughs> to the Keys. Well, see, and, and that's it. That's that's how much pressure we put on our friends. Yeah. Like, I'm <laughs> Lonnie and I were like, well, we're going. If any of you want to go with all Awesome, oh, but yeah. like we're going, we've already kind of booked our rooms here and there, and we're set. Our this party's is where I'll planned. do this date. This is where Correct. I'll do this date. If y'all want to come along, awesome. Mm, we'll figure it out. You know, that's somebody, cool. you know, I'll be drinking no, rum awesome, here though. on yeah. this day. Would you like to join me? Awesome. That's a that's a yeah. fantastic. That's a fantastic idea. And it's just fun. It was just a it's silly idea I had yeah. for Oklahoma D Day to surprise her for our tenth anniversary, yeah. and it was funny and it worked out kind of cool. So I'm like, that's it. We're doing it every ten years. That's awesome. See what's happening. I like you know. it. I guess we have something to do next year. Right. Let's, see. Let's start planning. That's it. Well, asshole, you got fucking well. goddamn dead legends, and that's in December. But I put it right outside. Well, actually, Paulie put it right outside your house. I just <laughs> but yeah, great I, idea. My, my job is like, how much more fucking time off do you need? Like, <laughs> right. Oh, well, and that's it. That's part of ro- rotating our refs. So we're, I'm lucky I have so many guys because they're like, really, all my vacation needs to go to your right. games. So I'm like, yeah, no yeah, problem. Tell your wife it'll be fine. <laughs> pretty much, you know. But so well, it's not like. You're traveling to places that suck, you know. I mean, hey, bring no, your yeah. wife, and that's yeah, what we do a lot. Yeah, yeah, squeeze we a day do a lot. Yeah. You're like, well, I can't go unless my wife can come because she's really kind of animate about it. All right, well, she can be a base rep. 
Mm-hmm. She doesn't know how to do it. We'll teach her. Yeah. You know, yeah. we just, it, that's the whole thing. It's such Learn a family vibe now. of our group. <laughs> Learn. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if I can do it, it's not brain surgery or anything. I mean, it's just paintball. I have yep. to use my hands? Yeah, you know. And <laughs> you can always see them the first time you do it. They're so nervous, so nervous. And they're like, this isn't very hard at all. I'm like, that's why we can do it. <laughs> yeah, right? Not too much involved. No. And it's fun. And they're just part of that the craziness. Awesome. We actually had Jody hang out at the rough house. Uh him and, and uh, Mama Bear came to the ref house out at Endless, and they're just kind of, I mean, even in a group of MVP, they were even spending like the first half an hour just kind of like wide eye watching us. <laughs> like, this is what happens when, you know, as much as we're friends, you still jumped into a crowd of people that have known each other oh, for 12 yeah, yeah. years. Yeah. And, and, it gets you know, weird. Yeah, and, you know, it was the after game. Everybody's happy. Everybody had a good event. Oh, yeah. Rum time. Yeah, and time to get loose. They're just kind of watching us, and they're like, Jody's like, that's it. I'm wrapping the next game I come to. I got to be part of this because it was oh, just, yeah. it's so I much fun. imagine what people. Think. Well, the San, the San Diego crew has a very, very weird, sadistic inner circle. It's yeah. called the Gay Boys. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's it. It's, it's yeah. Hano and the Band of Idiots, and I'm head dummy. That's yeah. actually what our chat's yeah. called. Yeah. yeah. You know, the gay boys, yeah. yeah. Shit gets a little weird. Yeah, we we Shit gets definitely. A yeah, weird. yeah. Oh fuck. Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got a Halloween party right around the corner. It's gonna be good. I mean, think about it. You've you've gone like you you've gone like past friends. We're not friends yeah, anymore. We're not. Fa- yeah. We just it's this weird entity past it. It's just it's and a I, thing. Honestly, like <laughs> regardless, honestly, like I haven't even named, I haven't even known most of the gay boys past three years. Yeah. And it's it's family. And I think that's the best thing about what we do within like modern day pirates. Whether whether it is the guys that you have known forever. I mean, how long have we like uh, we we've, we've probably known of each other for a while, but we have not like really, um, I guess, basically like just been in some kind of like uh, uh, congregation of our friends type yeah. of situation. But it's only been like the past three years. Sure, you know, but it's it's all it's like family. So you know, yeah, so MDP has essentially just become a like a asexual dating site. <laughs> <That's pretty laughs> much it, yeah. We're not gonna have sex with each other, I but guess. we're gonna be very intimate. I, just yeah. like, <laughs> I love I love you guys. I love you. But you know, like the minute you meet a new guy that's or guy or girl from MDP, you already know right. they're they're exactly like you yeah. in the right way. Yeah. You can walk up and, I mean, the first time you came out to Legends, we had talked a little on Facebook, but yeah. didn't really know each other. And the minute we met each other, we're already, you know, having a juggy and yes. my drink <laughs> or having a little hugging session. That and was right drinking. when I got there. Right, as soon as you walked in, I'm like, I got to meet Juggy, and it's this water bottle. <laughs> but it actually made sense to Still everybody around us. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, but it was it was honestly like I, I took, I was, I was there visiting another friend, Dan Meridian, mm-hmm. And I took a lift, 60 some odd dollars down to the field. And as soon as I walked in, he's just like, don't do shit, just relax. And you pulled in, you're like, hey, you're here. And I was like, yeah, I am. And you're like, booze. Yep, and that's, from drink. And it just it went, it went amazing. Well, that's when I got my sunburn. <laughs> yeah. when, when you were napping on the concrete. I was like, like I got to put you inside because you're going to catch on fire. I got to lose. No, that's how <laughs> I don't really know you. And I looked over at Trick. I'm like, is he okay? He's just resting. I'm not going to mention which one, but I was hanging out with one of the owners of the field. And he produced more booze. Yeah. Weird. Right? (laughs) Paulie's office is for business during Legends. Mikey's is the bar. (laughs) No no names. Just got there. Got hammered. I will mention Billy Saransky was there giving me more booze. So He's fucking horrible. He's helpful that way. Travis is helpful that way. Yeah. 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 But one of the owners was there. I was getting hammered. That's pretty yeah. much it. Yeah, you know? yeah. That was that was like one of our first like social meetings. Oh, absolutely. Where you're like, here, get hammered, go fall asleep over there on the cardboard. Yeah. And, that, <laughs> and that basically sums up the flow of what we do. <laughs> I mean, it's like I got a great tan though. Like it was almost like a full body tan. Oh, there's almost nothing. You were red as that on. fucking red yeah. on the fl- flag right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, well, we had Malcolm sleeping it off uh, this year. Oh dear, for Lord. an entire day and a half, he slept in she in uh, I think Baker's truck. It's like I had to charge him rent. He's been in there for a day and a half, and it hasn't come out once. And there's uh, always at least one. Always. I, I'm sorry, but uh, the the Living Legends this year was beyond any showing of any any vendor or any anything I've ever been involved with in paintball. Beyond any showing of hospitality. Uh, helpfulness and direction and and just all together like honestly I could have been walking around in my underwear 
and been completely uniformed and had paint and water in me just because of who was behind our tent. Absolutely. That, that, honestly, the MVP showing was was huge. Yeah. Dana cooking all week. Like, there right. so many so many names to throw out there. Yeah. That was insane. And everybody contributed awesome. something. Yeah. Awesome. Our order members, I can't ever say enough. I don't yeah. even know, you know. But I mean, it wasn't blocked off to just No, us, no, no. Right? Yeah, we, like, yeah. anybody was going back there. It was, yeah. it was amazing. Yeah. yeah. It was amazing. That was – that was You guys got to take Nick out, which yeah. – yeah. You know, oh my God, I, dude, people amazing. have people have heard me. I'm yeah. Nick and I are very good buddies. We're pals. We've been tight. I, I try not to be picky, <laughs> I but I, I'm sort of protective about him because yeah. there's things like people sometimes use situations to their advantage, and I hate it's that. Dumb. And yeah. and I knew I'm like, all right, MDP, his brothers, he's cool. He's mm-hmm. gonna be safe. He's gonna be taken care of. It's all good. Ba- his family's amazing. Yeah, like they're all mom's awesome good. people. Yeah. Awesome people. Mom, you know, once in a while will threaten me to make sure I don't let him play too much, you know, because his arms, if his arms sore, I'm coming after you. I'm like, oh, okay. I love the fact that his dad's like, hey, you know these guys aren't going to be filterless around you. You're going to get what you're getting. Right, yeah. right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's you know, awesome. I love The other day that. he was supposed to come yeah. play paintball with us, and he had to actually go do an event for March of Dimes because they were doing something with him. And he was being such a little bitch at home <laughs> that I'm talking to his mom on a text, and I'm like, well, give the big guy a hug for me. She's like, I'm going to slap him in the head if he doesn't quit because mm-hmm. he just wouldn't let it go. So I'm sending him a message on the side. I'm like, you got, you better quit, I dude. I love talking to him like FaceTime – or yeah. not FaceTime. I do uh, like uh, video the, messages. Yeah, the Facebook <laughs> messenger. Just, like everybody walking behind him, he's just like, jeez. Right, jeez, right. Nice. It's so annoying. <laughs> I'm like, dude, your mom's never going to let you play with us anymore if you don't quit. So yeah, the marching dive like, thing is <laughs> – it's funny you mentioned it because he fucking he uh he sent me the picture. He's like, I didn't get to play paintball because I had to get this bike, right? And right. I'm like, that bike's sweet. You still look like a faggot, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. He's just like you motherfucker. Right. And you two <laughs> have the best <laughs> relationship. I, I ran Let's into take a couple <laughs> seconds just to give Nick a little bit of shit right now. His, like, his right. mom brought mom and dad brought him out to NXL to hang out with us. We were right. going to be there for days, so he's more oh, yeah, yeah. In brought, Chicago, brought yeah, him out, yeah, left yeah. him with us, mm-hmm. and so we're hanging out and having a good time, and we kind of. Moved where he was so he could get in the VIP with us. We're having a great time and having a blast. And he's like, we got to take a picture of a trucker. I'm like, okay. And he's like, help me and help me put his hand up so he can flip <laughs> yeah. it off. Because, oh, yeah. yeah. you know, sometimes his hand doesn't work the way he wants it to. And he's like, help me make my hand, you know, get it right. He's like, okay, quick, do it. Before, you know, his yep. hand moved. And oh, take the picture. Yeah. And, like, he insisted. I sent this picture oh, yeah. of him flipping off trucker. And it was great because then Trucker, when I got here, I'm like, we oh gotta take God. a picture for Nick. So we yep. flipped him off, sent it back. He's like, oh, so good. And yep. He's like, so happy. <laughs> we yep. flipped him off. Fucking love that guy. Yep. Fucking freak. He's just, he's <laughs> twisted <laughs> like the rest of us. I love that kid. He's a great he hits me up every yeah. night. I love, mm-hmm. honestly, eight, it's like eight o'clock on the dot. Porno. Hey. Hey, bud. Yep. Shit. All the time. Yeah. I love it, dude. Yeah. He's it just so it much keeps, fun. It keeps me freaking, it keeps me normal. And dude. he loves paintball more than anybody I know. Yeah. Way beyond it. Way, way beyond it yeah i love him love him. paintball guns and pussy he's all about it <laughs> <laughs> and motorcycles and motorcycles not that hard to sell yeah, yeah right, right. this right. group i mean right. it's Let's, not that hard of a sell and awesome. add a little rum to that little mixture and we're all good all right. oh shit the <laughs> wedding he was drinking he was drinking i'll hold a straw for that dude any day here yeah, yeah. yeah he was doing shit. it good at that wedding he was getting on him Oh, and I would absolutely abuse the don't drink and drive jokes all night long with that. I would beat that to death. <laughs> all right, well, we, we could have, we're going to have this conversation all night long, so let's cut this one loose. All right. Awesome. Thank you, brother. Thank you. We'll do it again. Thank you, porn. Love you, brother. Thanks Love for sitting too. in and co- hey, thanks, co-hosting. Hey, fabulous. <laughs> Princess. You two are so cute. Yeah. All right, motherfuckers. Till next time. Peace. Peace, Peace out. Well done. Well play? played. You want me to play the guitar out? Of yeah, yeah. You want to play the we're all gonna heat and heat and rise. Yeah, just do the. We're all gonna heat and heat and rise. Oh, crambo! Can a revolver by his side? Crambo, crambo killed la 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 la. Slop do yellow bug too lot of That's a hard part, Ronnie.